Sutra. As the traces of a bird in empty space are difficult to express, difficult to discern, so too are the ten grounds meanings incomprehensible to mind and thought. They who from compassion, kindness, and the power of vows appear and enter the practices of the grounds, gradually reach perfection of the mind. Wisdom's practices are not reflections real. Such states as these are difficult to perceive. They can be known but cannot be expressed. Through the Buddha's power, they are proclaimed. They, you should receive them with all reverence. Wisdom such as this enters the practices. Millions of ants speaking does not exhaust them. I now merely speak them in a general way. The true and actual meanings are unending with a single mind. Await in reverence while I receive the Buddha's power and speak the supreme Dharma subtle, wondrous sounds with analogies and words appropriate. Every Buddha's limitless spiritual powers all come to be embodied by me. These places are difficult to express. I shall now speak a small portion. Commentary As the traces of a bird in empty space are difficult to express, difficult to discern. When a bird flies through the air, what trace is there to speak of? What traces can be shown to represent it? So too are the ten grounds meanings. Therefore, it's not easy to express them, not easy for me to instruct you in them since they are incomprehensible to mind and thought. If you use your ordinary mind and thoughts, you will not be able to understand the meanings such as those contained in the Ten Grounds. They who from compassion, kindness, and the power of vows, when Bodhisattvas speak the Dharma doors of the Ten Grounds, they all receive the compassion and vow power of the Buddhas, and they appear and enter the practices of the grounds. They appear in the world to cultivate the doors of practice of the ten grounds, gradually reach perfection of the mind. Step by step, the mind of wisdom is caused to be perfected and the enlightenment of body is caused to be accomplished. Wisdom's practices are not reflections realm. These Dharma doors are cultivated by wisdom. They are not states that can be understood by people's thinking. Such states as these are difficult to perceive. They can be known but cannot be expressed. Knowing of them is easy, but to explain them is not at all easy. Through the Buddha's power, they are proclaimed. If they cannot be expressed, then how does one express them? It is because the Buddhas of the Ten Directions lend their strength, enabling one to explain the Dharma doors of the Ten Grounds. You should receive them with all reverence. All of you Bodhisattvas should respectfully listen to these Dharmas. Wisdom such as this enters the practices. These doors of practice are entered through wisdom. Millions of ants speaking does not exhaust them. In hundreds of thousands of Ten thousands of millions of compass, they cannot be expressed to the end. I now merely speak them in a general way. I, Vara Treasury Bodhisattva, will now speak of them in general, not completely. The true and actual meanings are unending. The true and actual meanings cannot be expressed entirely with a single mind, a with in reverence, while I receive the Buddha's power and speak. I receive the great awesome strength of the Buddhas of the Ten Directions in order to speak these Dharma doors, the Supreme Dharma Sato, wonderful sounds with analogies and words appropriate. The Supreme Dharmas are so subtle, no comparison would suitable would be suitable to them. Every Buddha's limitless spiritual powers aid me and enable me to speak these dramas of the Ten Grounds. They all come to be embodied by me. These places are difficult to express, 
the dormer doors of the ten grouse cannot be expressed to the end. I shall not speak a small portion. Therefore, I shall not be able to explain these places completely. I shall just explain them a little bit. Sutra, disciple of the Buddha, suppose there are living beings who have deeply planted gurus, well cultivated all practices, well accumulated the aids to the way, well made offerings to all Buddhas, well collected white pure dharmas, been well gathered in by good and wise advisors, have well purified deep thought, have established great resolutions have brought forth vast great understanding, have manifested kindness and compassion in order to seek the wisdom of the Buddhas, in order to obtain the ten powers, in order to obtain the great felicities, in order to obtain the Buddha's dramas of equality, in order to rescue all those in the world, in order to purify great kindness and compassion, in order to obtain the wisdom without a residue, of the ten powers, in order to purify all Buddha lands without obstruction, in order to know all the three borders of time in a single thought, in order to turn the great Dharma wheel without fear. Commentary, Disciple of the Buddha, Vara Treasury Bodhisattva again says, All of you disciples of the Buddha, suppose there are living beings who have deeply planted gurus and well cultivated all practices. They are good at practicing the Dharma doors of the six perfections and the ten thousand conducts. They have well accumulated the aids to the way. They have well assembled the Dharma doors that aid in cultivation of the way and have well made offerings to all Buddhas. They are skilled at making offerings to all Buddhas of the ten directions and the three borders of time, and where collected white, pure dharmas. They know very well how accumulated pure white dharma, and have been well gathered in by good and wise advisors. Great and wise advisors are well able to tame and subdue living beings. They have well purified deep thought. They themselves are well able to have pure deep thoughts with no divide or mixed up thoughts. And they have established great resolutions and have brought forth vast great understanding. They have produced limitless and boundless powers of understanding. And they have manifested kindness and compassion. We who cultivate the way should always be compassionate, no matter towards whom it may be. Why is that? In order to seek the wisdom of the of the Buddhas, in order to obtain the ten powers, in order to obtain the great fearlessnesses, in order to obtain the Buddha's dramas of equality, in order to rescue all those in the world, to save all living beings in the world. In order to purify great kindness and compassion, it is also in order to obtain the wisdom without a residue of the ten powers, to obtain the Buddha's ten kinds of powers without residue, and in order to purify all Buddha lands without obstruction, to adorn and purify all Buddha's lands and cause them to be without obstruction. It is furthermore in order to know all the three borders of time in a single thought, to know the causes and effects of past, present, and future times, and in order to turn the great Dharma wheel without fear. For those reasons, they wish to listen to the Dharma doors of the Ten Grounds. Sutra, Disciples of the Buddha, when Bodhisattvas bring forth those kinds of thoughts, they put compassion foremost. Their wisdom increases. They are drawn in by good and clever expedients. They maintain most superior deep thoughts. They contemplate and distinguish the limitless powers of the first come ones. With the power of courage and the power of wisdom, their unobstructed wisdom manifests. They have compliant and spontaneous wisdom. They can accept all Buddha's dharmas. They use wisdom to teach and transform. That is vaster and greater as the drama realm, ultimately like empty space, to the exhaustion of the boundaries of the future. Disciples of the Buddha, when Bodhisattvas 
first reinforce those kinds of thoughts, they immediately transcend the ground of ordinary people and enter the position of a bodhisattva. They are born in the household of the thus come ones. No one can pronounce any faults in their lineage. They abandon the worldly destinies and enter the way of world transcendence. They obtain the dharmas of bodhisattvas. They dwell in the places of bodhisattvas. They enter into the sameness of the three buddhas of time. Within the third Kamas family, they are certain to obtain unsurpassed body. When bodhisattvas dwell in dharmas such as those, it is called dwelling on the bodhisattvas ground of happiness because of the connection with the non-moving. Commentary Disciples of the Buddha, Vana Chajari Bodhisattva again calls out, All you disciples of the Buddha, when Bodhisattvas bring forth those kinds of thoughts, then they put compassion foremost. Great compassion can relieve living beings so they separate from suffering and attain bliss. Bodhisattvas on the first ground make the thought of great compassion their foremost work of primary importance. Their wisdom increases. If you cultivate the dharmas of bodhisattvas, then you will obtain the wisdoms, the bodhisattvas' wisdom. The more you cultivate the practices of bodhisattvas, the more your wisdom will increase. They are drawn in by good and clever expedients. You will also obtain the unimpeded eloquence of clever expedient methods in speaking drama. They maintain most superior deep thoughts. What they maintain are the most superior, subtle and wonderful deep thoughts. They contemplate and distinguish the limitless powers of the first come ones. With the power of courage and the power of wisdom, the wisdom of their skill in contemplation discerns all states, and they have the power of very bravely and vigorously going forward in their cultivation. Their unobstructed wisdom manifests. It always manifests. No matter what state comes, it will not get in the way. They have compliant and spontaneous wisdom, natural wisdom, and they can accept all Buddha's dramas. They are able to receive all Dhamma doors spoken by all Buddhas. They use wisdom to teach and transform all living beings that is vast and great as the Dhamma realm. Those days are as vast and as great as the Dharma realm, ultimately like empty space, to the exhaustion of the boundaries of the future, to the ends of the future time it is that way. Disciples of the Buddha, when Bodhisattvas, great beings, first bring forth those kinds of thoughts of great compassion, they immediately transcend the ground of ordinary people and enter the position of a Bodhisattva. They are born in the household of the first come ones. No one can pronounce any faults in their lineage. There is no one who can find faults in the bodhisattvas of the Buddha's household. They abandon the worldly destinies. They leave behind the four evil destinies, those of asuras, hell beings, hungry ghosts, and animals, and enter the way of world transcendence. They certify to the attainment of the way which transcends the three realms. They obtain the dharmas of bodhisattvas. They dwell in places of bodhisattvas. They enter into the sameness of the three buddhas of time. They obtain the wisdom to enter equal into the past, the present, and the future. Within the first common's family, the lineage of the Buddha, they are certain to obtain unsurpassed bodhi the fruit of enlightenment, and there is nothing higher than that. When bodhisattvas dwell in dharma such as those, it is called dwelling on the bodhisattvas ground of happiness. What is it called when bodhisattvas dwell in such dharmas as those? It is the first ground. They attain the bodhisattvas ground of happiness and become very happy. What is that? It is because of the connection with non-moving, because they already have samadhi power and this happiness is derived from samadhi. They are joined with non-movement. Sutra Disciples of the Buddha, when Bodhisattvas dwell on the ground of happiness, 
they accomplish much happiness, much pure faith, much delight, much bliss, much elation, much enthusiasm, much courage, much freedom from contention, much absence of troubling, much absence of anger. Disciples of the Buddha, when Bodhisattvas dwell on the ground of happiness, they give rise to happiness because to they are mindful of all Buddhas. They give rise to happiness because they are mindful of all Buddha's dharmas. They give rise to happiness because they are mindful of all Bodhisattvas. They give rise to happiness because they are mindful of all Bodhisattvas practices. They give rise to happiness because they are mindful of the purity of all paramitas. They give rise to happiness because they are mindful of the supremacy of all Bodhisattvas and grouse. They give rise to happiness because they are mindful of all Bodhisattvas indestructibility. They give rise to happiness because they are mindful of the first comers teaching and transforming of living beings. They give rise to happiness because they are mindful of the ability to benefit living beings. Commentary Disciples of the Buddha calls out Varachajari Bodhisattva again, saying, All of you disciples of the Buddha, when Bodhisattvas dwell on the ground of happiness, they accomplish much happiness. They have a great deal of happiness and much pure faith. Their thoughts of pure faith also increase and they have much delight. They produce more fondness for the Buddha Dharma than you can possibly imagine. They have much bliss. At all times, they feel very happy and serene. No matter where they are, they are blissful and there are no obstacles. It does not matter what situations can, may present themselves, they do not feel them to be obstacles. And no matter what causes for afflictions may arise, they never become afflicted. In all situations and circumstances, they are content at heart. They have much elation. They are always elated that they can hear the Buddha Dharma and practice the Bodhisattva way. They have much enthusiasm. They are always enthusiastic, always vigorous and never lazy. They have much courage. They are always courageously vigorous. They have much freedom from contention. They never fight or argue with anyone. They have much absence of troubling. They never cause people to become afflicted. Nor do they ever deliberately trouble to others or obstruct them in their cultivation. They have much absence of anger. The Bodhisattvas who have realized the first ground that of happiness never become angry no matter how you treat them. Disciples of the Buddha, Vara Treasury Bodhisattva calls out again, saying, All of you disciples of the Buddha, when Bodhisattvas drown the ground of happiness, they give rise to happiness because they are mindful of all Buddhas. They constantly remember and think about all Buddhas and for that reason they are happy. They are not like us common people who day in and day out are jealous and obstructive of one another, single-mindedly concentrated on thinking of all Buddhas. They have no time to be jealous and or obstructive. They give rise to happiness because they are mindful of all Buddha's dharmas. They also always remember all the dharmas spoken by all Buddhas and they practice in accord with those dharmas. So they are very happy. They give rise to happiness because they are mindful of all Bodhisattvas. Not only are they mindful of the Buddhas and their dharmas, they are mindful of the Sangha too. They always recollect all the sagely Sangha members, the great Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions and the Three Buddhas of Time. And so they are very happy. If we cultivators of the way could at all times be mindful of the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha, when could we have time to be jealous or obstructive? We would never have the time to spend looking at others' faults. We would always be seeing out on faults, returning the light and illumining inwards. They give rise to happiness because they are mindful of all Bodhisattvas' practices. They are also always thinking of the practices cultivated by all great Bodhisattvas. 
of all the great bodhisattvas, the Buddhas of the future, some cultivated doors of the practice of giving, others of holding precepts, others that of patience, others that of vigo, others dhyana samadhi, and others wisdom. The Bodhisattvas cultivate those various kinds of practices, the six paramitas and the ten thousand practices. Therefore, when Bodhisattvas certify through the ground of happiness, they also have the opportunity to cultivate all of those Dharma doors, and because of that, they become very happy. They give rise to happiness because they are mindful of the supremacy of all Bodhisattvas and grounds. They are always thinking of the supremacy of the positions of all Bodhisattvas and so they become happy. They give rise to happiness because they are mindful of all Bodhisattvas' indestructibility. They think of the Bodhisattvas' realization of the three irreversibilities in thought, in position, and in conduct, and how no heavily, no heavenly demons or externalist ways can destroy them. Therefore, they become very happy. They give rise to happiness because they are mindful of the first common teaching and transforming living beings. They always remember and are mindful of how the Buddhas always compassionately take care of all living beings, causing them to end suffering and attain bliss, and so they become very happy. They give rise to happiness because they are mindful of the ability to benefit living beings. They are mindful of being able to cause all living beings identically to obtain benefits of the greatest kind, causing all living beings to hear the Dharma and be saved and end birth and death, these doors of practice which are most beneficial to living beings. Bodhisattvas, once they can cultivate those various kinds of activities, can obtain the highest kinds of causes and conditions, and for that reason, they become very happy.